So, here we go. Good stretch this way. And a good inhalation and squish. Deep inside Davies Symphony Hall, Vance George is taking the San Francisco Symphony Chorus through its paces. And when you open the vowel, don't open it quite so... Finesse that, all right? Once again, in the right half. The chorus is made up of sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses, ranging in age from the early 20s to past 70. As choral director, Vance has the daunting challenge of blending these 200 individuals into one unified voice. Who was late? I was going bum, 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 do, all right? Now, I don't like what we did. It has to come together with everybody in agreement. The chorus is tackling Foray's Requiem, one of the most ambitious pieces they've ever attempted. Rip your jaw open, let's go. They have two weeks until opening night, just 18 hours of rehearsal. And cover so that we have a, we have a softer and a darker, deeper quality. Uh, and then when it's bright, sing out. Vance's perfectionism is unrelenting. Keep the juices going, last bar of 43, top two bars of 44. We tend to sort of, the page turn happens and we go, oh golly, there's a page turn. The standard of excellence that Vance sets has earned the course international acclaim. They've made dozens of recordings and have been honored with two Grammys, all while maintaining an impressive performance schedule. This year, they'll give 32 concerts with the San Francisco Symphony, more than almost any other American orchestral chorus. Vance has raised a generation of singers, 20 years with the San Francisco Symphony Chorus. The chorus itself is 30 years old, and he's known as one of the interpreters of 20th century American choral music. Time for the break. What makes the ensemble's accomplishments all the more impressive is the fact that 170 of the 200 choristers are volunteers. From realtors and record producers to unemployed dot comers, the singers come from every walk of life. They come from as far away as the Central Valley to sing together, as often as three nights a week. Well, I work as a radio talk show. orchestra is all professional. I have 30 professional singers. So the other the volunteers have to function as professionals as well. The Fori Requiem next to the next to Messiah is probably the most performed choral orchestra in this country. The Requiem is performed Big noisy records like the Verdi and the deal with movement for and 4A chooses not to use that movement. It is a work that is meant to comfort the so there's a kind of delicacy and a sweetness about it. For A's delicate and subtle phrasing is a trap for singers, tempting them to oversing the emotional passages. Vance works on a level of uh, color and feeling, and he gets a thought in his mind. Uh, when we've done French works before, he didn't want ah, he wanted ah, because it sounded more French. Everybody, this is an O vowel. O as in foot, foot, look, and IPA would be a, a capital U. Ladies, let her see. It's just so exciting and delicious. Oh, do that song. Ready, ready, go. Thank you. I really love watching him because it's like pulling a rabbit out of a hat sometimes. How he, he just comes up with a way to describe
describe what he wants. A lot of times it has to do with food. He'll always say, oh, this is, you know, like icing, like chocolate. But that sounds, that sounds like you went to the butcher and had him slice off pepperonis, each one exactly the same way. Okay, one more time. Ready and go. This is gorgeous here. That's fabulous. I think when the choral conductor is putting a piece together, it's like building a ship. It's this ship made of air that we will um, go and send out to the audience. And what's odd about being the choral conductor is you're not the captain of the ship, you're building the ship. But most of the time, you don't get to conduct, it's the orchestral conductor who does. The chorus is just one element of a symphony concert. Therefore, the main conductor usually leads the entire program. This season, Vance will only conduct two of the nine choral works he's preparing. I could want it otherwise. I mean, I would like to play it, but that is the nature of my job. After two weeks of preparation with Vance, the chorus is ready for their first rehearsal in the concert hall. Vance is on hand as guest conductor Vladimir Ashkenazi begins his work with the chorus. Could I have it less vocal? I want it really like at a, at a distance, like in a big cathedral from, a, from one of the, uh, what are they called? Uh, yeah, somewhere, somewhere there. If I am preparing for someone else, then I prepare the chorus against him. He might want this faster, he might want this slower. So I have them put things in their scores so that they're ready really for anything. Once again, one, two. Aha. Could we do this? I gave some suggestions, some dynamics, some phrasing here and there, uh, but it's all beautifully prepared. That's the main thing. When it's not well prepared, you know, you usually don't, almost don't ask for anything because you have to work on nitty gritty, you know. But here, <laughs> just could I have this or could I have this because everything's so good. But after Ashkenazi just leaves for the night, through. Vance reigns the choristers in okay. for more work. Are you aware that you were behind? Okay, fine, fine. I was just concerned that he was telling you how wonderful you were and that you were maybe going to believe it. I always walk around the symphony hall, like every night, every time before performances and before we go on. I take a walk around the block. I take so I make sure that I have some time alone and just sit and breathe and listen to my breath and, and hum. It's a wonderful group to be in, actually. I have uh, my, all my family is in England, so this is my family. This is my this is my surrogate family. Cool. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Ah! That's the worst thing to tell a chorus member. Oh, I heard you. You know, I, I love that when my m mom says, "I'm sure I can hear you," and I'm like, "No, no, no, don't say that." <laughs> When you look at a requiem, first of all, the inspiration for it, people have come together to collectively mourn. That's the roots of a requiem. And what connects us together but singing? And so I think Foray knew that. And it's, it's a, uh, such a choral work. It's uh, homogenous in that 200 individuals take their breaths and we exhale in one collective sound. It's amazing. Singing in a group is so interesting because the idea is to become invisible and to 
blend with everyone. It's not about me. It's about this magnificent sound that only can be made with many voices blending together. And yet, I experience the communication and expression of the meaning of the piece in an absolutely personal, individual, and intimate way. And it's kind of magical. We are at a, an amazing apex of performance. This is a very special time for us. And it won't always be so. You know, singers will leave. Um, I'm not going to be here forever. Times change. And um, I, I am very grateful for, uh, for, this, for this group and, um, and my life. <laughs>